Hello children, welcome to AIMS India's online classes. This is biology session. You are watching Food Production from Plants, part 2. So in part 1, the crops, types of crops in India, for example, the crop seasons also we have learnt. There are two main seasons for cultivating crops in India. These are Rabi and the Karif seasons. Rabi season crops are sown in the beginning of winter, that is October to November, and harvested by March or April, isn't it? The Rabi crops uh, has uh, last from October, November to March, April and the crops are also called winter season crops. Okay, example, can you say some examples children? Can you recall? Wheat, barley, gram, potato and mustard. These are rabi crops and karif crops. Karif season crops are summer crops summer season crops. Sowing is done at the beginning of the monsoon season in the month of June to July and uh, the crops are harvested at the end of the monsoon season. What is that? During September or October. The Karif season has uh, last from June, July to September, October. Can you give some examples? Rice, Maize, groundnut, jewel, pulses, and uh, cotton. Isn't it? So, there are different types of crops like cash crops are there, the crops grown for uh, immediate sale, bring money immediately. Example cotton, potato, tobacco, sugar cane. So, these are all called uh, cash crops and orchard crops. An orchard is a group of uh, fruit trees grown in a specified area. Isn't it? So, the crop yield actually we can define crop yield as the final output of the crop. For example, the amount of several grains or vegetables or fruits produced measured in terms of weight means kilograms or tons and area hectare area measured in hectare one hectare is equal to 100 meters into 100 meters of land it is called crop yield it is generally expressed in kilograms per hectare kilograms per hectare okay and uh, we are discussing uh, agricultural practices. The agricultural practices or tasks, the various agricultural tasks which a farmer perform to cultivate a crop are preparation of soil, the first one by ploughing or levelling, the second one is sowing of seeds, third application of manures and fertilizers that is manuring. The fourth one uh, irrigation, fifth one weeding or the removal of weeds, then sixth one crop protection means control of pests and uh, plant diseases and uh, the seventh one harvesting, threshing followed by threshing and followed by winnowing and uh, the last uh, but one that is uh, preservation and storage, it is very very important and uh, in this lesson we are also going to learn about the improvement of crops, okay. Improvement of crops means introducing of high yielding varieties and uh, disease resistant varieties, okay and methods of cropping such as the crop rotation etc. The first in the preparation of soil, what is done? Before the crops are planted, the soil must be prepared. Since ancient times, the people have used uh, 
wooden or metal devices called uh, ploughs. These ploughs uh, used to dig uh, trenches or furrows in, the, in which uh, the seeds could be sowed. So often uh, animals are used to pull the ploughs. The today farmers are using uh, tractors to drag a plough across the field. The plough is like a knife that cuts into the soil, but the knife is curved so the soil turns over after it is cut. Okay? The soil is still large clumps after ploughing. So, after ploughing, a leveling of the soil is done with the help of a leveller. Leveling of soil is required for uh, sowing as well as uh, sowing as well as uh, for irrigation purpose also leveling is required. It also helps to break uh, large soil clumps. The plumbing also called as tilling. It helps to aerate the soil. It helps in easy penetration of roots of uh, seedlings. It also helps in improves uh, the soil drainage. It exposes the soil pests to predators. Leached minerals are brought up from the lower levels of the soil. It uproots the weeds and kills them. Dead organic matter is ploughed deeper into the soil allowing faster decomposition. Okay. So, we completed up to the preparation of soil in the last class. So, today's class uh, we are going to discuss about the sowing of seeds or planting of crops. Okay. Are you ready children? Let us proceed. Sowing. Sowing is the process of putting the seeds in the soil. Okay. Sowing is the most important part of the crop production. Before sowing, uh, good quality seeds are selected. Good quality seeds are clean and healthy seeds for a good variety. The yield of the crop depends upon the seed selected by the farmer. Do you agree children? Yes, the farmers prefer to use the seeds which give a high yield. Okay? Selection of seeds, a method, a simple method is there. So, they will soak the seeds in the water. So, are there seeds which float on water? Would those be lighter or heavier than those which sink lighter? Why would they be lighter? Because the damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter. Therefore, they float on water. Okay? So, this is a good method for separating the seeds. It is a simple activity. Sowing, uh, uh, before sowing, we test the quality of the seed by soaking in water. So, this is a good method for separating the good healthy seeds from the damaged ones. So, before sowing, uh, one of the important tasks is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds. See, this is the here, uh, the image. Shown here is a traditional method of sowing seeds using uh, the sowing device. Okay, in uh, olden days they used to sow the seeds by this method. Whereas nowadays uh, a seed drill, a seed drill is used. Okay, sowing of the seeds is done in the crops like uh, wheat, maize, bajra, and mustard. However, in some crops like sugarcane and potato, the vegetative parts like stem pieces are used. Okay? Seeds to be, the seeds to be sown at a particular depth which varies from crop to crop. The seeds sown too deep into the soil may not germinate due to non-availability of air as well as moisture. Isn't it? Okay? How to find the good and healthy seeds means the put seeds that experiment is there no simple activity put some seeds of a crop in a beaker containing water shake and uh, leave the beaker you will find that some seeds float while others settle at the 
bottom the floating seeds are not good for sowing so the seeds which settle at the bottom are fit for sowing okay children so another activity is also there that is uh, take uh, three soil filled containers place ten wheat seeds in each container and uh, each container at three different depths you can keep the seeds at three different depths say 4 cm 8 cm 12 cm water the soil for a few days and observe the number of seeds which germinate in each container so relate your observations with the depth of the sowing okay this uh, you can learn by doing this kind of simple experiments okay to test uh, how much depth is required for the germination of a wheat seed okay you can do this experiment and uh, no okay children so appropriate depth is required if you sow the seed very deep then it may not germinate okay because the conditions are not favorable okay let us proceed sowing the seeds uh, traditional tool the tool used traditionally for sowing the seeds is uh, shaped like a funnel the seeds are uh, filled into the funnel passed through passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends these ends pierce into the soil and place the seeds there nowadays we are using seed drill nowadays uh, the seed drill is used for sowing uh, with the help of a tractor this tool sows the seeds uniformly at proper distances and depths it ensures that seeds get covered with the soil after sowing okay multi purpose tool so this prevents the damage caused by birds the sowing by using a, a seed drill saves time and uh, labor cost okay that is the traditional method this is the seed drill which is fixed to the tractor an appropriate distance between the seeds is very important to avoid uh, overcrowding of plants this allows the plants to get sufficient sunlight nutrients and water from the soil so sometimes uh, a few plants have to be removed to prevent overcrowding after germination so what happens if more seeds uh, fell at uh, same place then they germinate so out of which uh, the best one we have to leave it and remaining you can pick out okay that will help in the healthy growth of that uh, remained healthy plant okay so adding manuals next step so these uh, special machines uh, help the farmers like seed drills help the farmers plant their crops planter or uh, farm machines used for planting crops that grow in rows cotton potato maize soya bean are all row crops they are so these machines uh, carry seeds and also some fertilizers to help the young seedlings grow the planter can sow the seeds and uh, seed and add to help uh, the young seedlings grow okay the planter can sow the seeds and add fertilizers to several plucked rows at once the crops like wheat and rice are not grown in rows the seeds of these plants are just scattered that is called broad cast method over the field a broad caster is used for uh, planting some of these crops and it has a wide mouthed tube that uh, spreads the uh, seeds uh, over the ground the broad casting is the method of uh, sowing seeds by hand at random distances the seeds of the plants like wheat are sometimes sowed with a drill a simple seed drill has a long pipe okay it will having a uh, 5 to 6 pipes the seeds are put in the funnel and distributed through the pipes in rows attached to the pluff the seed drills uh, may be tractor driven and a drill ensures that the seeds are properly spaced 
and that the seeds go into the soil up to the right depth. The seeds of rice and uh, many vegetables are not sown directly in the soil. Instead, uh, what they will do? They are first sown in the, a small plant or a nursery bed, we can call it as, and allowed to grow into small plants. They are called seedlings. Okay? So, healthy seedlings are then picked out and transferred to the field. This is called a transplantation method. A transplanting helps in selecting healthy seedlings and increase the crop yields, isn't it? The seeds or uh, seeds and seedlings must not be placed too close to one another. Otherwise, what happens? Uh, they will not receive the sufficient sunlight, water, and nutrients. The proper spacing also prevents the wastage of uh, space in the field. So, these aspects are automatically regulated when a seed drill is uh, used. Okay? So, uh, adding manures and fertilizers, you know very well, the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manures and fertilizers. The soil supplies uh, mineral nutrients to the crop. These nutrients are essential for the growth of plants. In certain areas, farmers grow crop after crop in the same field that is called crop rotation. The field is uh, never left uh, uncultivated or it is called a fallow. The method is called a fallow. Imagine what happens to the nutrients. So, if uh, immediately crop after crop if we grow, the nutrients are lost. If the nutrients are lost, what happens? The yielding capacity of the field is reduced because of lack of nutrients. Okay? So, continuous growing of the crops make the soil poorer in certain nutrients. Therefore, the farmers have to add manure to the fields to replenish the soil with the nutrients. This process is called manuring. Improper or insufficient manuring result in weak plants. So, manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of uh, plant and animal waste or plants or animal wastes. The farmer dump plant and animal waste in the pits at the open places and allow it to decompose. The decomposition is caused by some soil microbes. The decomposed matter is used as an organic manure, okay? organic farming. Nowadays, a great demand. So, a simple activity. Take uh, moong, means to know the importance of these uh, manures and fertilizers, a simple experiment is given. So, that is uh, take uh, moong or gram seeds and germinate them by soaking in the water and keeping in a cloth. Then select three equal sized seedlings out of these. So, now take three empty glasses made of uh, paper or fiber, whatever it may be. Take three glasses and name uh, mark it as A, B and uh, C. To glass A, add a little amount of soil mixed with a little cow dung manure. Okay? And in glass B, put the same amount of soil mixed with a little urea. And take the same amount of soil in glass C without adding any fertilizer or manure. Okay, that is the experimented one. Okay? Now, pour the same amount of water in uh, each glass and plant the seedlings in them. Okay? Already germinated seeds are there now. Plant the seedlings in glass A, B and uh, C. Keep them in a safe place and water them daily. Okay? After weekdays or 10 days, observe their growth. Day to day you have to observe, make a record. Okay? So, you will see the growing seedlings with manure and uh, fertilizer. So, what happened here? Growth is normal in all the three glasses. Did all the plants in all the glasses grow at the same pace? 
the same speed, same size? No, you will find a variation, is not it? Difference is there. What difference uh, in uh, glass A? Little growth. In glass B, you observe more growth. In glass C, the growth is very less because no manure or no fertilizer. But in uh, glass B, chemical fertilizer is added, urea. So, it easily dissolves in the soil and absorbed by the plant and the growth is fast, is not it? So, which glass showed better growth of plants? Glass B. In which glass was the growth fastest? Fastest in glass B. Better growth is in glass A. Okay? So, fertilizers and chemical substances are rich in particular nutrient, they are specific. How are these different from manure? The fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers, they are urea, ammonium sulphate, superphosphate, potassium or potass, NPK nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium manure. Okay. The use of fertilizers uh, has helped the farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy, maize, etc. But excessive use of fertilizers has made the soil less fertile or even it makes the soil unfit for agriculture. The fertilizers have also become a source of uh, water pollution. Therefore, in order to maintain the fertility of the soil, we have to substitute the fertilizers, I mean chemical fertilizers by organic manure or green manure okay? or leave the field uncultivated. We have to follow the method follow, F A L L O W. Follow in between two crops, have some gap. Okay? So, the use of manure improves the soil texture as well as uh, its water retaining capacity. It replenishes the soil with uh, all the required nutrients. Okay? So, usage of uh, organic manures must be implemented or encouraged. So, another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients is through crop rotation. So, this can be done by growing different crops alternately, okay? growing different crops alternately earlier Earlier farmers in uh, northern India used to grow legumes as fodder in one season and wheat in the next season. This helped in the replenishment of soil with nitrogen. The farmers are being encouraged to adopt this practice. Okay, you know, certain nitrogen fixing bacteria are there in the leguminous plants. So, this crop rotation method of is growing different crops on a rotational basis on the same land. In the first year, shallow rooting cereal crops such as wheat are grown for example. So, this is followed in the second year by deeper rooting crops such as potatoes. In the third year, barley or oats may be grown followed by legume plants like pea, soya bean. In the fourth year, which fixes nitrogen in the soil and helps to increase the soil fertility. Okay? So, this is the method. In the previous classes, you have studied uh, that um, the about the rhizobium bacteria. So, these are present in the nodules of uh, roots of uh, leguminous plants. They fix atmospheric nitrogen. Certain nitrogen fixing bacteria are known to be present in the roots of legume plants. On the roots, the bacteria develop nodules called root nodules. 
the bacteria live in a symbiotic association with the roots of uh, legume plants and help to fix uh, atmospheric uh, nitrogen ok in the sixth class you have studied. The nitrogen so fixed can be used by the plant roots from the soil. This is how the fertility of the soil is increased by legume plants. The process of converting atmospheric nitrogen into compounds which can be used by the plants is called as nitrogen fixation. Okay, here some chemical fertilizer differences are given here just uh, go through fertilizer and manure. What are the difference between the uh, fertilizers and manures? A fertilizer is an inorganic salt whereas, a manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung or human waste and plant residues. Okay. A fertilizer is prepared in factories whereas, manure can be prepared in the fields, agricultural fields. A fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil, humus is a natural manure. Okay. The manure provides a lot of humus to the soil whereas, fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium whereas, manure is relatively less rich in the plant nutrients. Okay. What are the advantages of manures? You know the organic manure is uh, considered better than fertilizers. This is because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous due to which uh, the exchange of gases become easy. It increases the number of friendly microbes such as earthworms, bacteria, fungi. It improves the texture of the soil. Okay. So, this is the manure dung, cow dung manure. It is in a wormy compost made by earthworm. Another one is the, these are green manures. Green manures uh, such as uh, cluster bean, crotalaria, gentia, cowpea, sesbania, aquiliata, sesbania, rostrata. These are some of the plants used as green manures. Okay, children. Hope you understood. Read the textbook. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates.